Welcome to Grown Ups, a different kind of podcast where we explore and rant about different topics. In this first edition, we will be starting with the topic of growing up and what you would change if you had the chance. Of course, the conversation will then most likely be sidetracked to other topics, and uh, that's pretty much it. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello. Right, neat. This was your idea. Well, not uh, topic, I suppose. It was your idea to do the podcast, yeah. Yes, and and your idea with the topic. So, what would you change? So, first of all, the topic, like you said, what would you change? Imagine yourself being 15 again. You still have the same amount of knowledge to this day. What would you do different? Would you do school different? Would you do uh, anything else different? Would you buy a big thing? Would you buy a house? A different kind of house? Anything. So for me, Tesla. yeah, I was, I was investing in Tesla. I yeah. was, I was like, I assume we're not gonna <laughs> talk about those kind of things because that would be the obvious things. Like, you, you wouldn't yeah. necessarily know to invest into like stuff in the future. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, also when we talked about this, I was like, okay, let's look away from politics, lottery tickets, stuff like that. Oh, oh, that's like... what. Oh, that's what you meant by lottery tickets. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Let, let, let's not, like, write down the numbers and then wait a year and then go back and, like, ah, this was the number. Okay, gotcha. good. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> but assuming that things went somewhat normally, what would you change kind of thing? So, first of all, uh, I went into media. Uh, I don't regret that. I wouldn't regret that because media is something... That we can always do, always rely on. There's TV, there's movies, there's everything. And then went on further to uh, uh, to network and security, which I kind of do regret. I would still do the same thing, but I would go to a different school. And uh, But if I have to do something completely different, we talked about this, me and a couple of friends earlier. We talked about this, like, what would you do different? For sure, I would go to uh, uh, driving, uh, what's it called? Uh, I, can't, I can't get the word in English. Diggers, like uh, oh, diggers. And, yeah, excavators and everything like that. I would do that for sure. I would I would go into that. Um, uh, so, so me and you kind of took somewhat the same route to start with. Uh, mm -hmm. with the whole media st stuff and and I then went on off to uni to do media again which which I I I I regret in the sense of I don't think that was my best spent time um this was back when I actively started doing YouTube for the first time around and other things so there's a lot of stuff that I I I enjoyed during that time and that was, that was something I was about to say. Well, you didn't use your school time as much as in school time. No, I Did... <laughs> not not at all. Um, to but, be fair, and neither did I, though. But it, it but it it was just a sense of I I don't think I would have worked with anything in this kind of you know system anyway i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to be a media person mm. um and, and i don't mean like youtube and, and and twitch and stuff like that necessarily but i'm i'm talking like you know a broadcaster or a um yeah like a, a producer or something like that <clears throat> um but yeah i it's uh it's a weird thing the whole uni part because it's it's also a part where you where you grow up, right? It it's where you um. It's where you learn. Well, I moved away, so you learn to live on your own, do stuff that's required, yeah, same. and all I'm, that. Yeah, I, I also moved away. Um, so it 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 it's 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 easy to say I would have done something different, but I'm very glad with all the experiences that came from that kind of um the well experience, I suppose. Oh, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think if I if I were hard pressed to make a decision, I'd probably say, 
my biggest regret when it comes to like learning to and that you know deal um i regret not going into a i again i don't know the the english word for this but i i the trades let's put it like that yeah um, yeah i i i regret spending so much time in quote unquote academia that i would rather just have spent learning a trade be that as an electrician be that as a plumber whatever but something that was actually you know a proper trade not saying that media isn't but but it's uh it's arguably more vague i would imagine yeah no for sure i i i get where you're coming from i really do i'm with you there as well because it's the same thing like we both went into something but well for me at least i didn't know what i was expecting i just went into it like okay this sounds cool i mean i went into network security the first courses were like mine uh linux uh hacking security and it's like oh my god this sounds awesome and yeah <laughs> It was awesome, but it was still, it was the very basic part of it, and I regret not doing it more full time for it, like go for example into it completely. Yeah. So, so interesting point because I'm somewhat with you there. I'm like, I almost regret not because because we were told when we applied to this uni uh, program that. There wasn't to be any, like, coding or anything. It was to continue doing what we enjoyed, which was, you know, videos and all that. Yeah. Come to uni, we find out, nah, f you know, there's coding. Quite a bit of it. Mm. Um, and I just stopped caring at that point. Yeah. Um, and to the same effect, it's like, I, I, sometimes I wish I went in wholeheartedly to try it. But at mm. the same time, if I did that, I wouldn't have done YouTube. Now, yeah. YouTube necessarily didn't lead to anything, but it, it was still like a really... F I look back at it as really fun memories, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it gave you some perspective to it as well. Yeah, so so it's like... In that sense, I, I don't regret it. But I think mm -hmm. if I would have gone more into it, I probably could have figured out the coding. It's just that I had no interest for it, and I was so tired of school at that point that I just... I just stopped. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. think it's it's always a thing of like when you haven't got any experience of what you are wanting to do with your life, then it's incredibly difficult to pick something that you are gonna like anchor yourself to for the rest of it, because you f you tend to pick on what you like doing, and therefore mm. that is often not what you want to do for a job. Yeah. So that that was similar for me like i went and did music technology which is like a load of music production stuff and i love music but i would never want to do it as a job so i like you eric lost interest in it lost all sort of will to carry on doing it and ended up sort of just really not enjoying it as a whole yeah, yeah. i i because I... you're you're forced too early on to pick what it is going to be that you you know anchor yourself to and often that's why you end up just picking something really random that you like, but then you actually hate the idea of studying and then continuing to do as a job. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, I, I I agree. I think there's something to that. I I, I it's I I learned this because I'm not an active person. Most people who know this know me know this. I don't care. I don't do anything actively. Um, by that I mean I don't like exercise, walk, whatever. Uh, however, yeah. I did find that I, I actually enjoy having a job where I can come home after a day at work and be physically tired mm. uh, from doing something, right? Um, yeah. I do not want a job where I came home and was uh, tired just mentally because that was mm. then I wasn't able to come home and, you know, play games and do the things that I really enjoyed in my spare time. Because yeah. I just I was too tired for that. Um, that was one of the main things for me when I when it came to picking a job. But we I think we're gonna get to jobs probably a bit later. Um, 
but yeah so so what route did you take in school uh jake so in the uk obviously like uni's not free and for me i by the time i'd finished sort of what would be you know like globally a bit more known as like high school but in the uk is secondary school um I, I couldn't be bothered really to carry on with something like further. So I went to college um, because you have to here, you have to stay in education until you're 18. And then after that, it was just sort of a case of like, right, I've got to go and get a job now because I, I, I know I'm not going to uni. I know. And especially because of the course I chose in college, like I said, was music and I didn't want to do that anymore. It was guaranteed that I wasn't going to then follow that up with going to uni and like doubling down on it and going okay well here we are i'm gonna now go and get a degree in music production which is just not what i wanted because i was already like sort of going yeah i you know i I enjoyed the course because i enjoyed music but i knew it wasn't something that i wanted to carry on with and pursue so for me it was a case of I, i know that i'm not going to uni i know i don't want that for myself i know that i'll pay a load of money and then we will I'll pay a load of money and then I won't get what it's worth back out of it so I went off and got a job and I I wouldn't regret that for a second because I just know in myself that I would not have got anything out of going to uni and spending all of that money and having that debt that you would hear for the sake of a degree that I'm never going to use right yeah I mean I it, it's somewhat misleading and I, I I think I think we can talk about this without getting too political at all. Um, when when it comes to Norway, it it's all it's often said that we have free uni and stuff, and we mm-hmm. we we sort of do. Don't get me wrong, we we sort of do, but there's a lot of like ifs and buts to that. to that because yeah. Yeah. like me and Neat, the closest uni is what two hours away. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's either you have to drive back and forth, which isn't free, <laughs> or you have to rent mm-hmm. somewhere. And so, so it's like the uni itself may be free, but there's lots of processes around it that isn't free. Uh, and oh, no, I, yeah, and yeah. Norway is now having the same issue that, ironically, that the US is having, but maybe not to the same extent, where you have people that are coming out of like master's degree at like, yeah. what, 27? And they yeah. have, you know, 700k in debt. Yeah, now, yeah. granted that 700k in Norwegian, so it ain't as bad, but it's still... A lot of money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, the the actual um, living situation around the course is obviously not free. However, obviously, when you're talking about the fact that to do a year's worth of university studies in the UK is something to the tune of, like, nine grand so per year... So then you times that by the three years that you're likely to spend in university, you're looking at like 27 grand by the time that you're finished. And then obviously you've got your living expenses on top of that. So I think that if, if you offered to university students that genuinely wanted to go to uni, like, would you like your uni should your uni studies to be free? they'd bite your arm off for it don't get me wrong like there's a fairly comprehensive student finance package that you can get here that i imagine like is fairly competitive of what is out there I, it's one of those things of a lot of people say that you know if you go to uni you're not really going to notice the cost of it um paying it back that is mm-hmm. but there's so many caveats as to like you know what grant you get what what like so the the grant is for your living stuff. Your uni stu- uni bleh, 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 bleh. your uni studies are covered no matter what, and then you get a grant to cover your living costs. But that's dependent on like your family situation and stuff like that. So it's really it's really like you won't ever know what you're gonna get either until like you actually are, are there applying for your loans and being like, oh, I've not got enough money to cover my living costs. That's gonna be great fun. Yeah, but I think I think like you say without like getting like too political into it it it, it's a wider issue that we kind of have which is that if you actually look at the options post college or post sixth form or post high school whatever whatever stage you're at it's kind of it's become almost like the accepted thing 
as like as a lot of people now try to get themselves you know what would be classes like blue collar jobs like office jobs if you want to like quote unquote make it it is like well are you going to uni no then why aren't you going to uni sort of thing yeah i, th yeah. I think there's a certain amount of st <clears throat> not not stigma i think that's too harsh of a word yeah. but there were definitely some form of expectation for you to do any form of like higher education yeah um, absolutely which is arguably a bit ridiculous when a country like norway with its low population mm. is now at the point struggling to hire you know plumbers electricians yeah you're you're quote unquote yeah. lower paid jobs like yeah. less educated but the, and i mean that with all of the respect of oh yeah like, that being like almost a satirical statement like some of the most important jobs are have like you say and i, I would go as far to say like have that stigma of being for people that are less educated because they didn't go to uni where that just isn't true and like you say that that only enhances that stigma of not going to uni therefore you're going to end up you know in waste management or sanitation or something like that which is just a bit ridiculous um but then that, that also leads to the fact that i don't know if you guys have that in norway but here i know so many people that have come out of uni and the job market is so saturated with people that have got cover letters that write just like theirs and jobs job app um job uh cvs sorry that mm. write just like theirs that there's no place for them in the job market mm -hmm. you know yeah. they are they are one of thousands of tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of people that have left uni that year yep and they've all got the same experience to the same level and they're not differentiated mm. in any other way to the point where a hiring manager for a job might look at someone that hasn't gone to uni and be like oh this is actually interesting i might actually see what this person has done with their lives because it might have actually been that they've got more experience because all these all these you know mid mid 20s people coming out of uni have got no real life experience to speak of they've got no real you know yeah no anything I... anything that differentiates themselves from the other mid 20s uni students that have come out they're exactly. sort of all blended the, into the same bowl aren't the, they the, they're all green and and yeah it it's it's funny cuz cuz one as you mentioned, and I, I still think that's the case, but I think it's, it's flattening out a bit. As you mentioned, it's like the lower paid jobs, but yeah. ironically, those are now starting to become better paid because yeah. there's just yeah, not yeah. enough people. And that's going to, I think, I uh, again, I'm uh, guessing here, but I think you might see that some people might be upset by that because yeah. why would I get paid the same as a master's student when I've taken bugger all education compared to them, right? But it is just a supply and demand okay, issue so when it comes to the population. Let me give you an population. actual example of that. Is I'm not gonna say who, but I have a friend who is working in. Uh, she 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 has a master's degree in law, and well, she doesn't work in law, but she has a master's degree in law. I have two years of private education in IT security. I work with nothing towards IT security, basically. And yeah, I earn more because it's a different company and it's a different place uh, to work with. So she still has the master's degree and I have, like you said, diddly squat. I don't have anything, basically, and still work more because there's a demand for it. There's this, this has to be done. What she works in, she, there's not a demand for it per se. It's interesting you say as well that she's got a master's degree in law but doesn't mm. work in law because that's one of those things that's always really confused me about university degrees is that everyone is always like, oh, go get a university degree. It's a transferable skill. It's, a, you know, all university degrees are transferable. It almost begs the question of why go to university at all if your degree is worth the same amount to a law firm if you've got a degree in law as it mm. is to some completely different company that has nothing to do with law. Exactly. And you're going to work as, yeah, like a, a data analyst. It it, it makes yep. no sense to go to university, study in this thing. You might as well go to university and study the easiest course you possibly could if it's all transferable. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, I think we're actually all in agreement there. I, I think, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, and, uh, so there's there's no ranting per se because no no I mean there is there is um, <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're already quite not off topic but but aside on the topic uh, yeah. but yeah back to like growing up I I remember being in what like ninth grade or whatever mm. and and there was almost at least for us there was like almost no information about the trade schools and all that it was just pushing the not the agenda, but it was just pushing the pushing education. The higher yeah. education. And and I remember actually being not upset, but but like I I, I hope they changed that. I, I, like, I hope I hope Yeah. I hope that they change that so that the younger generation realizes that hey, there is an alternative to this where you can do two years of something as an apprentice and you're already better qualified than people that are 20, 70 years for certain jobs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I think that's, you know, it, and it's, again, it's one of those things that's difficult not to get too political about because I don't think that that's something that, you know, is, is, a, is a fault of the schools or whatever. I think that is something where your country as a whole goes, well, we want our work, we want to be known as the place where the workforce has all got master's degrees. And we're all like really highly educated. Otherwise, you know what? What is the the onus on Norway to actually give its its citizens free university and higher education? You know, it, they want that for the citizens of the country. But what that does have is that backwards effect of there'll be people that would have made excellent plumbers and excellent electricians that go, oh, why would I? Why would I? Because there are countries that don't have free ed- free higher education. So I'm going to take take benefit of my free university, and especially you know still being in. I know it's not quite the same, but sort of in the EU, you've got that thing of you might go. Well, I'm going to get my free education, and then I'm going to take that down to Spain, where they might not. I'm not quite sure, but they might not have their free education. And then, mm. like you say, it's all about that supply and demand thing. So all yeah. you've done is you've taken your high supply and you've moved it to a place with high demand. Well, that's the best of both worlds, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know. If 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 we're flipping the script here, I know that mm. I know that people's done that. They've like Norwegian. They've taken masters in certain special yeah. fields, and then they've yep. gone. You know what? I'm just going to move to Asia, where there's not as many yep. of these in this certain area. I'm yeah, just going to yeah, no. move that, become rich, live a great life, and that's cool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But that's the difficulty is because because you're you've Norway's got a saturated you know university studied pool, then you've also got the issue of the fact that there'll be more people that feel that why not you know there's no there's no demand here, so you take the benefit that you get as a Norwegian citizen and then you move it out and don't then bring those rewards back into the country. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean I agree. It it mm. I agree. If they move out of the country, they're no longer in a Norwegian asset. But it, I'm, I don't mind that as much. I, I, I think that's fine. I think eventually things, you know, come around and they, they travel. It is, it is what it is. Yes. So yeah, 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 yeah. All right. For well, sure. That was pretty cool. Um, let's skip ahead a bit. So we've talked, actually let's ping pong a bit. I, I, because I can't get this out of my head right now. <laughs> because you've wrote so you've wrote something about buying something big and stuff. So so for example, you have the house. I, I have a house. You, yes, you, you bought a house. Yes. So if you were now, how long ago did you buy it? Nineteen. Oh, uh, oh no no. Uh, twenty nineteen. I mean, like not. Yeah. Uh, twenty something. Yeah. yeah twenty. Yeah. You bought it right before COVID, right? Yeah, roughly. Yeah. 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 So, if you were going back to 2019, late 2019, you know now you're going to buy a house. Would you still buy the same house? Would you wait for, for example, f- yeah, I know, um, well, yeah. I think you you have a deal with your parents, right? Oh, yeah. I, I can, I'm, yeah. I'm open. I, I'm open as a book. I don't, I wrote this to Jake. I have basically no limits to what I'll on the internet. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm um, just... Yeah, I so there's, want to... there, there's, there's different ways to do this. Uh, I'm not sure how it is in the UK, but uh, I assume it's the same. So if you buy, if you take up a large loan, you get, if you can cover it all, that's grand, that's fine, you get the loan. If you can't cover it all, then you get either your parents or someone to stay in this, your, like, bailiffs. Like, they 
they will. Yeah, it's a it's a collateral sort of yes, thing. Yes, collateral. Yeah. Right. Yeah, a uh, little bit. It's it's uh, there is a better word for it. Uh, sort of 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 how to you're essentially like underpinning that loan but yeah, yeah it's, it's sort of a collateral you so like did, was it like a your parents putting their house up as collateral sort of thing no uh or i mean they, they vouching that's for one way to it. do it yeah yeah that's one yeah. way to, one do, way it, to, to put do it to put out put up the house yeah, yeah. what well, i mean we're, <laughs> we're in such small areas that yes it's basically just vouching but yeah. but yeah. uh but on a on a different note we decided to do it slightly different because if you do that and i mock up something i yeah, become a useless yeah. yeah they get issues right yeah yeah, yeah which 100%. they which they don't want and and my parents have a deep pretty decent economy uh so what they did instead they took a flexi loan mm. of 300k and they just paid it right off so they basically didn't loan any money they just removed the part of the loan that would have exceeded my limits um and then so i basically just basically gave you the down payment to get the yeah. loan and then i then pay them right uh, <coughs> yeah. which was the deal uh, yes yeah yeah I, I think i get you yeah they it, so the loan to buy to put the down payment on the house or whatever they took mm. out in their name and then you you pay for it kind of yeah uh, basically yeah, yeah, yeah. I, w I went hey can i get this loan of, on 2.15 mil and they went no you can get like one 800 of or whatever yeah and i went all right i'll take that and my dad went okay we'll just pay the rest so that that's out of the world we don't have to yeah. worry about it uh we're not gonna get charged interest on it yes. any other rest he of will it. just yep. pay us back when he can and that's fine yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that's what we did and uh and, yep. and that worked well now you did say something about uh, what did you say about me doing no, something I'm, different. I'm thinking like uh, for now. I think you. I think you talked about this earlier. Like you have a deal with your parents. Like eventually they're gonna move out and you're gonna take over the oh, farm, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Farm is farm is a, a lucrative. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't a farm, but it's a it's a yeah. It it, it has yeah. some land. Uh, I get what it you has mean. some yeah. land. Yeah. Um. So so that's the plan for that. So would you still buy the same place? Would you buy a different place? Like, if you were oh. able to save up for, like, save up half a mil more or find a different place which would be in the same price range, okay. would you do anything different? I think you're attacking at this at two points. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer in two parts. Yeah. Uh, the first part is from... Because this house is large for me. I It's, it's like, very big. It's like 230 square meters. It's way too big for a single person. Um, oh yeah but that's fine i'll get to that later uh the first thing if we're talking about purely the economics of things mm -hmm. i wished that i would have taken three years living at my parents building up as large of a fund as possible mm -hmm. to get the smallest of loans as possible for um, sure my loan isn't big it's uh, yeah, it's like 1.8 mil when I when I accept Yeah, it. that's very cheap for the time being. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's gotten expensive lately, but other than yeah, that... Yeah, but like, yeah. Yeah, um, the interest is high, but still, it's, yeah. uh, it's not a big loan. So I would have done that, because I think, like, both the jobs I've had, I've made, what, around 30k a month. Some more, some mm -hmm. less. Let's just, yeah, let's yeah. just say 30k a month, just to keep mm -hmm. it simple. Uh if I lived with my parents, I could have probably saved, I don't know, 20 to 25k a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, having an extra half a mil already paid off on that loan would have been great for a couple of things. It would have been great because the, the monthly amount is lower, which would allow me yeah. to, one, do more things. Because I, at mm. this point, know I have to limit myself because I just don't have the money. Also, yep. it would allow me to save more. Now, up until the interest started going haywire in Norway, I put out, so one like 1,250-ish a month went into a fund, right, for, mm. for retirement. I can't do that anymore because I need that money to just make things go around right now. Yeah. Um, yep. So, obviously, having a... 30% reduction in a loan would allow you to then do this uh, more 
I don't know, evenly and easier. So that would be like my economical part of, I think this would have been a cool, like, if I was aware, I would have done it like this. Um, would I have bought this exact house? Now, let me preface this by saying I am extremely happy with my house. Um, it's a nice house. It's somewhat secluded, despite being in mm -hmm. the middle of a, uh, I don't know the fucking word for it. Um, just large town. Not a large town, but uh, in the middle of um, uh, the. Home. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> English motherfucker. <laughs> uh, but, but it's fine. We'll, we'll, um, yeah, we'll... in the middle of a bunch of other houses. Yes, in a, in a state. Yeah. yeah, let's call it that. Sure, why not? Um, <laughs> so rich as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, yeah, no, the 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 like older english version yeah of, it's called an estate is, in in english yeah it's right yeah that but that's that's you can use it two ways an estate is used to um especially in like modern towns where you would build a new set, like group of houses you would call mm. them an estate they're over there yeah. that's a housing estate don't don't, um, go, don't google it because that just makes it even more confusing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because according to Google, it's construction field, which is just not oh correct God. at uh, all. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, is, that the, is that the direct translation? Yeah, that would def yeah. So yeah, I would definitely say it. it, it the, the translation would be a state then, because yeah, yeah, and in old English, yeah. an estate is is a the sub land, so. subdivision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at any rate, yeah. So it's very it's suburbs. It, it's it's secluded. It's a suburb, yeah. Yeah, suburb. It's it's secluded. It's it's nice. It's large enough that I can expand should I have a family in the future. So that's yep. also one of the reasons why I bought it. Um, For sure. I don't think I would have bought a different house, but I think and a house is also an investment. True, mm. but I think there is I think there is a completely different argument in that, and the question would rather be. Would I have bought a house to begin with? Yeah. Or would I have just built one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I would have... I, because I've been thinking about this a bit. If I were to redo it, I would have bought a smaller house. Uh, or built a smaller house that was one floor. Because there's no need for two floors. Mm -hmm. It's I don't. It's just dumb. If you have <laughs> the room for it, one floor. You don't need anything else. Yeah. Um. And I would have built it in a, in a way that you could expand it later, where it would be natural to add on a couple of bedrooms should you need them. That way you yep. don't have to start out with a large house. You can just build onto it as you go. That is what mm -hmm. I would have done because you would have had a newer house. It would have been a lot cheaper to run because it would be less electricity and stuff. I think that yep. would be the way of doing it. But I'm, I'm by all means very happy with my current situation. Um, and I think if I were to ever sell this house, I would make my money back and then some because it's yeah it's very <laughs> central. Uh, I'm I'm. Taking... And also, you did a lot with the house when you first bought it. Yeah, but it, it was you know primarily surface renovation. It wasn't anything still, deep. Still, yeah, yeah, but it still marks up the value. Oh yeah, and in general, I think it's an easy resell. Um, I don't intend to do that, but it, it's there at least, right? Yeah. Sorry. No, it it's uh it's weird because. <sighs> It, it's a big decision, and it, it's a really... Wait, because just to clarify, are you, you're renting right now, yes? Yeah. Yes. So it's a really bizarre situation, the whole buying a house thing, because because obviously you have to buy it via, like, uh, people that's selling it. I don't know what they're called. But, Estate agents. Yeah, those ones. <laughs> yeah. And, and, basi and basically you just say, I want this house, I bid X. And then they yeah. send out a message to everyone who's on a list that, hey, this house has now started bidding. So you can't do anything quietly, especially when it's done publicly. If it's done privately, yeah, that's different. Yeah, if it's done public, it's... Yeah. You're basically screwed if there's a high interest in now, it. Now, here comes... For anyone, and, and this includes us three, I imagine, that don't have a lot of money. I've never had, <laughs> like, large, yeah. like, vast amount of money. Yeah. Uh, you are sitting there with a phone... And every time you send a text, you are basically just throwing away fifty thousand. Yeah. Mm. With every text, it's like ah, that's fifty thousand. Yeah. That's fifty more. Goodbye. Yep. That's fifty more. <laughs> and yeah. in in the span of ten minutes, your bid has gone from one point seven to like two point one mil, and you're like, 
where did that money go? That's a car. <laughs> that's that's like a yeah. massive amount of money. So yeah. I found that entire situation quite bizarre. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. So did you uh, did you have a bidding war? Oh yeah, and I'm yeah. I'm fuck it. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be calling people out here. I'm <laughs> pissed, right? Because. <laughs> After you've done with the bidding war, at least in Norway, I'm not sure how it is elsewhere, but at least mm. here, you get a transcription of everything that's been sent between the the active parties yep. in the bid yeah. round. I think it's actually the law. Yeah. And it's so annoying, because I have the transcription, right? And I'm, <laughs> I was bidding against someone who bought a house further down the street. So I know who yeah. they are, because yeah. they're the same age as me. Um, <laughs> and... and in it, it's like, so I started at 1.7, which was under market, but, you know, yep. still got yeah. the ball rolling. Put in a bit. Yeah, they went, what, 17, well, 1.75, I went 1.8. And when we, once we got to, like, the 1.9, they started writing, like, yeah, this is our last offer, we don't, we this is our limit. Yeah. And yet, they still bid me up, like, 200k before they finally pulled the plug. <laughs> and that's just so infuriating. Now... It is to be said, as far as I'm aware, they could have still pulled the bid in the sense of uh, the the sellers wouldn't uh, uh, accept a, a too low bid. Uh, but mm. but it, it it still felt annoying because when you looked at it, it felt like you were robbed. But most likely, yeah, yeah, I would have sure. had to pay something similar anyway. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so that's an example. In I don't know how it's in Britain, but in Norway. You can still, as the owner of the house, when you're selling it, you can reserve the right to not sell it to that person. Yeah, uh, well, as in based on their their personal thing. Yeah, like just based on whatever like you want. Well, yeah, I guess I guess it's. So theory, if you right? were to bid a house, and Eric was about to bid a house, I would be like, Nah, I'm not gonna sell you the house, even though you're the highest bidder. I'm not gonna sell you the house. I'm gonna sell it to Eric. And that's actually an example uh, here from my neighbors. They did that. So there was a very old lady who lived here and she died. And the kids, they sold the house because they all established. They were of age. They, they were like in their 30s. They had a family. They established in a different town. And they started bid war. It, and the guy who lives there now, he had to back out from the bid war. Because, yeah, it was too high, basically. Mm. And a friend of uh, the kids that were selling the house, he went over to them and said, Hey, listen here. So the guys you're bidding, the guys that are bidding, they are now in their 40s and 50s. They will use it as a hunting cabin. They won't do anything with the land. They won't do anything with it. And the guy who wants the house... He really wants to fix it up. He wants to live here. He wants to establish a family. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but just keep that in mind. Yeah. He went in, I I don't know how much lower, but it was a fair amount lower mm. because he had to back out yeah. and he won the house because of that. So that's, that's cool. I think that has to be more infuriating than what Eric is telling. <laughs> Yeah, still he still got the house, but <laughs> went to 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 what cost? Because they really wanted the house. They were bidding, and they could have gone far. They were rich, right. so even more infuriating when you don't get the house with the highest bid. True that. True that. But well, yeah, I, I but both, so. both both yes and no. I I yeah. it, it, intent kind of comes into it. I think. Yeah, hmm. for um, sure. Uh, what's really weird in Norway, though, is, uh, when we're talking about Norway, is the fact that we have, like, weird-ass property rights law, which yeah. are on the way out, but but they're confusing. Um, Like this house is on that law, if it's Udl you're yeah, talking yeah, about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Same here. To explain <laughs> that to Jake. Um, yep, go my, for it. My parents bought their house in 96. Mm-hmm. Um, now, they bought the house, it was all done, they moved in. Now, yep. they couldn't renovate. Well, they could, but here's the deal. They could renovate the house, but some a descendant of the people that were selling it 
could then, up to, what, like two months after the, the sale of the house, mm. just say, I'm buying that. And there would be nothing they can do about it. Weird. Because there's there's a... It's, it's like an old law in Scandinavia where things went down you know, your relations, they, you know, you inherit, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, your bloodline. Yeah. yeah. And, and and they were super strict. Now, obviously, my parents would then get their money back, but if they then invested something into renovating it, they wouldn't get that no, back. Right. right. It's, it's, it's weird. Because refund, the guy could still, policy. the guy could still, uh, when when he said, I want to buy the, I, I, well, I changed my mind, I want to buy the house, yeah. he could, he would still get it for what the estate agent said yeah. this is what it's worth yeah. if they renovated it for and it was worth a mil more they wouldn't get that money back no they, i know i know what you mean yeah so but um, that 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 law is also on the way out which i think is cool yeah. I, I, I think it's a useless law um it was a very good law at the time when there was a lot of stuff happening with the farms and the everything like that. It I mean, was a good law by then, but yeah. for now, no, it doesn't. I, I think. It's, but uh, yeah, the the farm where I grew up, or it's not a farm; it's more of a homestead. But yeah, the uh, where I grew up, it's the same thing. They could just, but there's also a lot of uh, bylaws with it, so it's just for the oldest kids. In Eric's thing now he's i he's am the, the one i am the <laughs> one <laughs> he's the chosen one so it doesn't matter but for us when my grandma dies it will go to my aunt yeah. and then if she turns it down it will not go to my dad it will go to her kids yes from the oldest then further down then further down to the youngest yeah that's, a, that's and then always... it just fades away yeah it's a bit we have a weird one like the so, royal family here in britain it's not it's not based on your kids and who's next it's based on your kids and then their kids and then it moves yeah. back to who's next it's, it's odd yeah don't get it but here it doesn't move over to the next again it just, it just dies so, yeah. It's gone. yeah it just dies out so weird kids grandkids and then nope <laughs> <laughs> And right. there's also a, a bunch of different laws. For example, I've read about it this because I'm guessing there will be a fight eventually about it. Yeah, tends uh, to be. Which is sad. Also, I, I I find that yeah. I find that sad when there's um when there's fight over inheritance and whatnot. It it it's sad to see families, espe yeah. especially if families are on good terms prior to it. on it, good terms yeah. to start with. Yeah, it sucks to see them then fracture. Yeah. But there is also, during that, there is something called uh, maintaining law. I don't know. It's the best way I could translate it. So, for example, for me, if well, I live here now, I live at the farm, I live at the homestead. As long as I maintain the fields and the, uh, the forests and everything like that, I get that law. So I can swoop in and actually buy the house. I can just surpass everyone else and just... I've maintained this property for five years. Let uh, me have it. <laughs> I guess that that comes under just, you know... The, the fact that you have been living there means that you should stake some claim onto it rather than yeah. just allow someone else to come in and essentially take your house away. Uh, yeah. It's, um... I, I think it's... I think it's good that these laws get clarified and cleared up because I think mm -hmm. it's massively confusing for people in their, you know, 17, 18 to figure out this shit. Yeah. Um, it should be more straightforward. I, I guess. I, I, I somewhat agree with Neat. I think there... Obviously, there was a reason for these laws back when and it probably mm. served its purpose, but I do think that's mm. part of... It, it's done. We, we don't need it anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's plenty of plenty of laws around that are like that anyway, aren't there? Oh yeah, I mean, oh possibly. yeah, there is. Just I mean, go into anything. I, there's. I can't remember which state it is, but there's a state in America. I think it's Alabama. You're not allowed to whistle after five o'clock, out in the streets. 
<laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of weird laws. I'm pretty fairly sure in France. Pretty sure in France, you're not allowed to name your child Bottom. Uh. <laughs> yep. Also, isn't there like a British law that you're not allowed to use like a megaphone while driving? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I mean, you're not allowed to use I'm, most things whilst driving. I'm, and I'm fairly, fairly yeah, so, but... I'm fairly certain Dara Breen think, made something about that at some point. I think, I think these days using a megaphone while driving would just come under being distracted whilst the, <laughs> like, yeah. behind the wheel. Yeah, so probably. I think it still has transitioned over to something a bit more sensible. Uh, but I mean, they say, there's been people that have been pulled over for like eating, like, and I don't mean even like you know. I remember you're not stopping was... to to buy a hot dog and then just eating it. You're more well, like there, there eating was, cereal. There's quite a there's a there's a cool. I I find it quite funny to be honest. Most of the time, there's a program on in the UK called Traffic Cops. Don't yeah, know if you've ever I've heard seen it. Seen. Yep. Yeah, I've seen it. And it's obviously just you know the police, the the traffic police specifically. They are usually you know arresting high speed chases and stuff. But, but there was this one episode where they had a uh, uh they'd hired out like a proper HGV lorry truck, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they had put a, a, ca a video camera on the left hand side or the right hand side for you guys obviously mm. um, in the passenger seat and so it meant that as they were driving down the motorway they were able to video um, the truck drivers and what they were doing because of, like, they have a sort of you know because they're up high they can sort of get away with quite a lot of stuff yeah. and there was there was a guy that was driving his truck and he had a full on ready meal on his steering wheel and he was just eating that with a knife and fork while while yep. steering his lorry <laughs> but yeah i don't even mean like eating eating in that regard i mean like if you've got a sandwich in your hand you could technically be done under like driving whilst distracted because yeah. you know you're not yeah. fully in control of your car even though you know it's just a sandwich but do you okay, have so that Sorry, go on. No, I was we were talking about cars. Do you have yeah. mm. when you when you done your driver's uh, thing, yes, uh, the driver's test and all that. You get your license. Yep. Do you have a Years. test period? Uh, uh, come again. I I do believe they do have it. So in Norway, we have basically when you get your license, you yep. have two years, which you're on probation. Basically, it's not probation, but we call it probation. Okay, yeah. Got uh, it. So it's, for example, if I drive illegally, if I drive over the speed limit oh. and the copper yep. stop me, I could get double points for it. No, I will uh, not get uh, the po the same points as I would now. I would get double. Cool. Yeah, we, we absolutely do. Yeah, it's not double points, but it works the same way because it's just a case of you get half the allowance. So yeah, it essentially yeah. works okay, out yeah. to be the same thing. Yeah. So instead of getting double points, it's like if you, I think it's something like if you get 12 points, mm -hmm. then you're mm -hmm. done for a full license. If you're in the first two years, you get six yeah. points, you're done. And yeah. Then, yeah, you then it is you. just the same. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like it's the same thing. It's just not double points. It's half the allowance yeah. instead. But it, yeah, absolutely we do. I can't remember if those are the right numbers, but we absolutely no, have some that form sounds, of that. No, that sounds right because it's the same it as we have. It sounds like the same thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, the reason why I bring this up is because you were talking about you know driving distracted and all that mm -hmm. um if you're on your probation yep. and you drive without a seat belt oh yeah and yeah, yeah. and on your phone you just lose your license because yeah, it's I mean, three points each it's three points yeah. for the seat belt it's three points mm. for the for the fucking looking at your mm. thingy the phone and that doubles well, up to 12 and then you're just you've lost it <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I think, you know, we've obviously like a lot of our laws and stuff will be still inherited off of EU laws and rightfully so. And I think that's exactly it. Like you say, it's three points for not wearing a seatbelt. It's three points for your phone. There you go. You're done. Yep. In yeah. the same way that we've got a law here where it's something like if you're doing 30 over the speed limit. So like or something like that. So it's like, you know, you get done for speeding. If, you, if you're doing 70 miles an hour and you're doing and you get caught doing 90, then that's mm. that. But like, if you you get an extra bonus, you know, bonus um, telling off if you're doing like thirty over. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a hundred on the motorway instead of seventy, then it's not only is it a more um, stringent uh, speeding penalty, but you also get an extra little bonus one for doing thirty over. Yeah. And I think yeah, like you say, that would that would just get you straight, you know, your license taken away straight away. We we have the same, yeah. are we? It's uh, I believe it's if you're under if it's under sixty k, okay, it's like thirteen or sixteen or eighteen. If you're that yeah. much over, it becomes a higher offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I... and then it's like twenty six over after eighty, I think. 
Yeah. yeah. So I have a friend who uh, was like, this is years ago. He was like, okay, so when it's 80, I can drive 102. If I get stopped in this, I would not lose my license. If I drive 105, I will lose my license. Mm -hmm. So his goal was to drive at 102 in the 80 zone all the time. And he managed for a long time, but when he got stopped, he was like, okay, I should drive 80 when it's 80. <laughs> no. I mean, to be honest, we, we have we have it. It's not it's not so much a law, but it's like common knowledge that all the speed cameras and everything else in the UK, they have something like a margin of well, they give you a margin of error of like ten yeah. percent mm. to uh, to allow for like speedo discrepancies because obviously yep. you know cars have speedos, but they're not all like calibrated like the police are. Exactly. So, um, so they could read high or low, and for the ones that read high, if you're doing seventy and your speedo's reading seventy seven then mm. it's usually like, it's, it's, it tends to come down to like a two plus uh, sorry a 10 plus two rule so you get like the 10 percent plus two miles an hour and then you start yeah. getting like done for speeding mm. so essentially it's the same sort of thing like you could you could be going through you could be going down the motorway doing 77 and in theory you could blast past a speed camera and it wouldn't do anything mm. add that with the fact that most car speedometers read high so you're actually yep. reading higher than you're actually doing because, yep. you know, why not? You tend to, if you could be doing, you know, 80 down the motorway, go past a speed camera and it, it doesn't actually pick you up because it's got, you know, the margin of error and your speedos reading high anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just... But, uh, so, regarding to speed cameras, do you have moving cam moving speed cameras? Like, do, do the police set up moving speed cameras? You're... Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to add to that. Yeah, they do bring a van up to a bridge if you're. On the yeah, because like you, that. they actually or... bring cameras, right? Like they bring like the full on with the flash and everything. Uh, not so much. Isn't it just yeah, radars? We, yeah, we we have the vans, so yeah. they'll bring they'll they'll bring a van. Um, mm. that either has a camera, like a, a it, it looks like a proper like film camera. Yeah. But, it, it's because it's like you say, Eric has got like the radar sort of thing um, mm. in it as well. But, but would you get they're... stopped for that, or would you just get the fine in the mail? Uh, those ones on the usually the fine in the mail. Um, yeah. But then you, you you know they also do a lot of the the police cars might stop on like a hot spot and they'll just yeah have yeah a laser control them. yeah yeah and then later down the road there'll actually be another another mm. copper who'll pull you mm. into like a lay-by or something like that and be like right yeah. here you go here's what we found and you know you can yeah, get lucky no, with because that we one. have that but we don't have the 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 van thing we don't have yeah. that so that that the, doesn't that astonished the, me like all of a sudden like oh shit common. there's a camera here <laughs> yeah the vans are actually more common um here where you'll find like you'll be going down a road and all of a sudden there's a speed for camera in front yeah. of you that you know has never been there before yeah, yeah. and yeah, it's a van parked up by the side of the road, and it's just, you know, mm. oh, there you go, you've been done for speeding. Yep. Serves you right. No. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, yeah, like, I, I, mean, I mean, that would be the case. I've actually never been caught speeding because I'm a good guy. Oh, I have. And I, never... I got caught in a camera once. Uh, and, well. No, I got caught in laser. All and right. I got stopped, and the guy was, like, looking at me, and I was looking at the guy, and... I was like, so do you need my license or anything? And he's like, yeah, no, I'm just waiting for to see how fast you were going. I was like, oh, shit, was I speeding? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea I was speeding. But oh. uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the it was in a bad place because it was downhill and the, the, the speed changes just before you start going downhill. Oh, yeah. So I didn't notice that. I mean, it was, yeah, it wasn't too bad, but... I, I was a bit angry. Yeah, mine was small. It was like sixteen hundred, I think. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, a, it same. wasn't a large amount. It was, but it, it was still annoying. And I mean, you don't get anything on your license or anything. It's just still. Annoying. Yeah, you don't get any points on it. Do you have Do you have the chance? Do you have the choice to take like a driver's awareness course? That's what no. we have in the UK. No, that shit ain't a thing. <laughs> Pardon? That ain't a thing in Norway. Uh, yeah, we have that, which is like you can it either take be, the, you can either take the uh, the fine, or you can go on a driver's awareness course that you still have to pay for. It's like, it's still half the price of the fine or something like that. 
but then you have to also sit in a room with a load of other delinquents um, <laughs> talking about why you shouldn't speed and all the rest of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I would I would like the course that's the opposite. So why should you speed? Why you should speed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or get the get the instructor who's just having a bad day. Uh, cost... And he comes in and he's like, Look, I can't be bothered to tell you why you shouldn't speed. Today I'm gonna tell you how great speeding actually can be for you. <laughs> why oh. we should all speed. And this is why we speed. Oh. Well, we've gotten wildly off topic. Yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing more there's so, nothing more about growing up than talking about what type of speeding ticket you've got all right intermission done right growing up let's um let's take it all the way back um when i was a young boy yes when i was a rich man um my what? father took me into the city oh that's a lovely song Just right um the marching band he actually did, which, but but that's besides the point. Mm-hmm. What's your, if you don't mind sharing? I do. What is <laughs> your either best or most impactful memory growing up in a positive way, in a positive <laughs> sense? We're not talking like negative. You know, I had a relative very depressing yeah. child. Uh, you're yeah, so we're not talking minutes. about bullying the bullying on the school wall. No. Uh, no, just... Getting pushed out of the tower. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Lannister? <laughs> yeah, I never pay my debt. <laughs> never call that guy wanking. Very odd. <laughs> no, but do you have a memory or or a, or a feeling or a time of year, whatnot, anything? That you're like, I remember this being well, a good time. We're talking about when we were 15, but like for me, it was way before that. Well, it so, way before yeah, that. We're still on don't, growing up. Don't talk about what you yeah, were doing when you were 15. Yeah, no. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Every Friday night. <laughs> no, it's more like... Eric got over his mic. It's, <laughs> uh, it's different connotations to that. <laughs> I don't want to share my thing now because it's just gonna sound bad. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So I'm for me, like I said, I'm growing up. I, I I was growing up in a homestead. My grandfather was living in the house right next to this house that we're living in now, and uh, he had uh, some sheep and stuff like that. So every spring, come near summer, we had to take the sheep's into the mountains further in and every fall we collected them and for me that was always the highlight of the seasons like to both take the sheep in and go collecting them again because it was usually me my dad and my grandfather we just packed up a lunch we packed up some dinner we sometimes we slept in the tents and we were fishing and stuff like that and especially now i'm thinking of that more and more now because as you know i i have a kid now yeah, and yeah. it's something i want to implement into her as well not necessarily with the sheep and everything but just enjoying <laughs> the the nature yes and, yeah, yeah. Uh, take her out take fishing and camping and stuff like that it's something that really has grown into me and yeah, no, I really enjoy that. I, it's I think that, the fondest memories I do have. Yeah, that's one of those cool things, though, about like, um, you know, the the situation of of living in like rural Norway yeah. and yeah. those sort of things. That's a very cultural thing because like, you'd find very few people in the UK that have childhood memories of taking their family sheep's in from the north <laughs> from from the mountains and yeah doing different things you know highlight of our week was friday night was fish and chip night yeah it's yeah about exactly. as interesting as and, it gets and it's it's also well it's not interesting but it it is it is definitely regional bait because i'm yeah, i'm, I'm yeah, the yeah. same oh, right sure. so so my favorite memory well not memory but favorite time of the year i suppose because that's kind of what we're touching on now yeah. would, would be when you know you woke up summer 
you could hear the knives from the mower on the tractor. Oh, yeah. And then just the fresh smell of finely cut. Newly cut, cut grass. Yeah, you know, that's f- for summer. That's, you know, can't beat that. And just. That's in the sheep bells, the bells from the. Uh, around the. Oh, the sheep. yeah, definitely. And I mean, there's uh. just lots of those things. It's like. I remember shooting. Uh, well, not I wasn't shooting, but my my grandfather shooting deer, the mm. you know, and and we'd always yeah, the moose hunting the deer yeah, hunting yeah. season. We'd always like we'd that. always yeah. take the piss. He doesn't. He's not alive anymore. We'd always take the piss because he <laughs> when he aimed down the scope, it always bounced back, so he always cut his cheek. Um, <laughs> and it was a really good shot. It was just it was just a weird scope yeah. and a weird technique, but. But yeah, so uh, no, you know those things I remember, and, and as weird as it sounds, like having memories of being there when, in as you said, in a hunting team, when you then skin the moose or the deer yeah. and all that, it. I think for some people that's only lived in in a city environment, that might sound really brutal. Like, mm. hey, I brought this. Mm eight-year-old to be watching skinning of dead animals right yeah yeah or just or just generally just different cultures because like i said you know like i've i've lived in like a fair few um more rural areas and i've certainly never skinned a moose before yeah like, it's definitely also a cultural thing yeah and yeah like oh, you're right sure. to some people it definitely sounds a bit odd but it's also incredibly interesting just how different people live their lives and and are brought up as well um and yeah because it, it does also then end up shaping your your whole view on life going forward is what you've been brought up on so mm. to be brought up on you know those things of, of being with nature and you know to a certain extent also you know taking bits from nature first hand that's a very different thing culturally to people that haven't had those experiences Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, I was, well, I think I was six or seven when I was with my dad hunting. Mm. And he was the lucky one that actually shot a moose. So I was like, what, 50, 40 meters away from the moose. And then you just heard bang, 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 and just saw the moose falling down. Yeah. That sounds brutal. But to me, it was like, yep, this is normal. To me, I didn't mind it. I, I was just yeah. holding my ears because my dad didn't have a silencer on his gun, so it was loud as hell. Uh, nobody did back then. <laughs> yeah, nobody did back then. I mean, when we shot something, we usually loaded up like three shots and then shot them in the ground to like let the other guys know, like, I shot a deer. Uh, we didn't have radios back then. <laughs> oh, I... The, Talking hunting memories. That that's like the that's the coolest part of hunting, especially if you bring yeah. dogs into the mix, because you then hear the dogs tra- like yeah. tracking the 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 animal, mm. and then you you're just waiting, and you hear yeah. you hear the the dogs that that tracking them or chasing them towards where you know there are closer, yeah you closer. know there are hunters that are positioned up on the yep. ridge or whatnot, and you're just sat there going, when's the boom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Here comes that button. <laughs> no, it's um it's it's really fascinating. And I think um I do think kids in general have I I because some people are like really offended that, that kids get to see this thing because they're like, No, they're kids yeah. and, and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, okay, it's a cultural difference, that's fine. But I think it's really good for the kids to see it. In the sense yeah. that, hey, this is this is what this is. This is an animal, yeah. after all, right? Yeah, I think this is I what you eat. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you, Nate. Like, I think it's also a case of you gain greater accountability for your own actions by taking that. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, for kids that have only ever known packaged meat mm, in, on the yeah. shelves in yep. in a supermarket, yep. they have like it's all well and good to say, you know that you haven't committed the cruel crime of taking a life but mm. that you've also always just you know third partied that onto someone else to do that you yeah it's, it's not like you're you're cruelty free because at the end of the day you've always consumed that animal yeah but you've never put in your own effort to 
to um to do that yourself and that's that's where the interesting thing comes in with you know cultures that are very um removed from any sort of modern day um, amenity like you know the tesco's down the road it's really interesting to to gain an insight into and i'm talking not just rural norwegian culture but i'm talking about like you know tribal culture and um yeah. and native native people culture that sort of thing from all around the world and sort of also actually for uh to for me at least and um as you were talking about the different kind of cultures yeah it's not just about okay this is what we're doing this is what we're eating this is how yeah. we do it it's for me it's a major respect for the animals yeah yeah exactly that exactly that and it's a case of you should I... have you should have the respect to be willing to put in the effort to take that animal's life if you're mm. then going to eat it yeah I thank the animal, even yeah. though I thank the animal. It came to me. I, I managed to get a shot at it. I, I thank the animal. I respect the animal. I'm taking what I need, not what I want. Yeah, exactly. The convenience of being able to pick up a packet of beef sometimes is it it, it withdraws you from the reality of the fact that that will have needed that animal to, animal's yeah. life to end. And so... Mm. You know, I, I say all this with the fact of would I enjoy hunting myself? No, probably not. Um, and that's fair. But yeah, exactly. But I, it doesn't mean that I'm anti-hunting at the same time. Yeah. You know, as long as it's done right and the way that you guys are saying it is is seems you know not the. But I, I don't really like hunting purely for sport. That's the mm. thing that I don't really mm. like, and that's the yep. difference in like what we talk about. You know, I'm not a trophy hunter. hunter. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, not that kind of thing. Because I think that's the issue. Here in in the UK, you know, we don't mm. have a plethora of, like, wild animals as such like that. Mm. You know, we mm. yeah, we have deer and stuff like that, but they're, they're small and, and they're, they're very skittish and they hide around. But yeah. it's that leads to a lot of people not having a culture of wanting to hunt for food and stuff like that a lot of them hunt for sport and i might be mm -hmm. somebody speaking out of turn and that might be wrong but that's the way it's at least perceived by a lot of people here that mm. you know people that hunt really only do it for sport only because of their own enjoyment i'm not saying that's also not why norwegians do it you know like, you, you no, for sure i know a lot of norwegians like who actually it. travel to africa just to Right. Yeah, yeah. And trophy hunt, but, but, but that's but, again that's trophy hunting. Yeah, but that, yeah. but that, that's it, it's it's also look. I don't I don't care that people are anti trophy hunting or whatnot, and I'm not saying that I'm totally for it either. But <laughs> pe people people think that trophy hunting is like I'm just gonna I'm gonna fly down to Africa. I'm gonna shoot the biggest thing I find and then get, collect the trophy. Whereas yeah. most of the trophy hunting that that normal people are doing. That's animals that selected to die because of certain reasons. Either yeah, yeah. either they're too old, either they're interfering with other species so that they need to take it out. And that's the same yes. thing in, in, in Norway. Deer hunting, sure, mm. it, it's pretty decent. I, I'm not the biggest lover of that meat. I, it, it's, it's wild meat, so it, it is what it, it is. It has but, a very gamey taste. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so don't get me wrong. I still eat it. It, it ain't the best that I don't know, but it, I still yeah. eat it. Um, Fair. But deer in Norway will become an issue at some point because they yeah. do breed insanely. And right now, for some reason, especially in where I grew up, there is no interest to hunt it anymore. So there's th the population just isn't being controlled at anything. Really? Yeah. 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 I mean, look. If I if I so wanted to and had a uh, semi-automatic weapon with a larger <laughs> magazine drum, um, again, not uh, just legal in Norway. Not anymore, that not that it's on. legal, but but hypothetically, yeah. At the most, last season, I think my dad counted fifteen animals on one field. At the same time. At the same time, granted. Granted, they weren't all adults, but there's still like no, no. fifteen of them, right? Yep. That didn't happen back. And you in the can day. see up northwest, for example, with the the deer. And uh, I mean, we were up hunting. I think it was like twenty eighteen or something. We were up hunting, 
And we had 15 to 20 deers coming at the same time on four different places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, give, give me a sec here. It, it's really sad, though, because uh, the deer population is pretty much, at least locally, at an all-time high. Um, but the moose population is more or less at an all-time low. Oh, you were full. Okay. Uh, which is sad. And the, I, I don't know exactly the reason. It, it's not necessarily just that it's been hunted to, like, extin extinction, but it, it's... <sighs> I do think the two are somewhat competing against each other as well because they are encroaching on each other's territory. So it, I'm 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 hard pressed to say that I'm against trophy hunting, but it, it needs to be done under the correct, uh, you know, circumstances. Yeah. Same with population management of animals. Some people find that abhorrent, uh, be it wolves, be it and and that's an entirely different topic i mean you touch yeah, that topic we, in we norway don't want to go politics. yeah if you touch that topic in norway you are choosing a side no matter what yep. um deers people don't care people don't care about bambi bambi dies Some it do. is what it is <laughs> yeah very few people yeah not got a big vegan population in norway then eh? no it's getting up there but yeah still, in cities it's, <laughs> yeah it's the cities not in the rural rural area Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Have you ever been to Oslo, Nee? Oh, yeah. Sadly. <laughs> yeah. Sadly. Yeah, I don't like it. I oh, haven't. Fair enough, fair enough. I don't miss it. Like, I don't I like mind it, it but uh, I've been a couple of times, but usually, like, when I'm there, it's for a reason. Like, for example, I'm going there with concerts or something like that. Mm. So I'm not going just to, like, hey, let's have a weekend in Oslo. It's like, nope. No, fair enough. I quite liked it. It was good. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. I don't know. I find Bergen a lot more interesting. Yeah, I was about to say, I I'd would like, rather go to Bergen. I'd like to go. Um, mm. It's definitely somewhere I've got on my list of places to go. Yeah. But... So let's uh, we we checked in with me and Eric, but we didn't really check in with Jacob. So your childhood memory or like I've, something? I've honestly, been trying to think of something, and like it's, I've not got anything nearly as idyllic as, like, what you guys are saying about you know moving sheep up mountains and crap like that. But for me, it was just you know, school holidays. Happy days. Go to yep. Wales. Oh, you Wales. Wales? Uh, sheep's still in the picture, boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Well, I mean, you know, UK's very small. So yeah. the, trip, the trip across to Wales, even though like it's technically a different country, is like three hours. It's, it's not long. It's not worse? I thought it was longer. Well, obviously, it depends on which part of the country you live, doesn't it? If yeah, you, yeah, yeah, of course. If you live in London, it's probably four or five from where mm. I've tended to live. It's usually been about three. Yeah. So, not terrible. It's not bad. So, you still go to Wales, or do you have uh, you, like, anymore, dropped it anymore. off? Well, I, I still go for myself, but to a different part. So, like, we used yeah. to go to the South Wales, like, some beaches and stuff like that. And sure. now I tend to go up to North Wales to um, the national parks up there. There's lots of mountains and go cool. walking around them instead because that's yeah. what I've sort of preferred as I've got older. Um, yeah, yeah. Still go to like beaches and stuff, but we'll tend to do that in like Cornwall because they're nicer. It's yeah. a nice area of the UK to go to beaches and, and shit like that. But so yeah, that's like, something that actually astonished me about, or it's a. It's just because we live in Norway, and yeah. that's why for me it's messed up. But uh, so in Norway we have something called how do you best put it, Alec? Almansletten. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we, we <laughs> have a law which basically stipulates that right of free travel. There we go. Yeah. Right. You can yeah, yeah. walk wherever you want and yeah. camp wherever you want. As long as it's not within, like, 
200 meters off farm. <laughs> yeah, so wow. we kind of have that in the UK, and a lot of the rest of the UK has got so... Because obviously, like I said, it's a small, small area of land when you really mm. consider it. So actually, there's not a lot of, like, great wild countryside that's, like, unclaimed, if you will. Yep. Yep. A lot of it either is... We, ha we have a lot of... So they're sort of split into, like, right of access laws and mm. then, like, right to roam laws, which is yeah. sort of what you're sort of saying. So, like, Scotland still have quite a lot because they oh, really? are less less populate, uh, population dense. Mm. So they still have quite a lot of, like, wild camping rules that you can go there and you can go into the national parks and you can just wild camp if you want and you can cool. do that sort of thing, which is really nice. Um, mm. But the rest of the UK is... You have to you have to pick your place, so yeah. it's not like a it's not like a guaranteed thing that if you go to a national park in the UK, that like you're all, you're going to be all good, and if mm. you pitch up your tent, that you're not going to have someone you know knocking right on it in the you? middle of the night. Well, more just that you're not going to have someone knocking it on your tent in the middle of the night, going like you know you know it's illegal to camp here overnight, uh... sort of thing. Which I get I, I get you know some people have a valid point in saying that that's stupid because it's it's just land isn't it what and no yeah. one's using it overnight it's not like you're scaring off sheep or anything like that but yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a funny one um there's there's certain places where you'll be absolutely fine and mm. yeah like the, it's one of those things isn't it it's like it's like the whole getting caught thing it's like how what's the chance if you took your little backpacking tent out into somewhere mm. in england and just camped overnight that yeah. is that was like you know a, a national park like not not anyone's farmland mm -hmm. well, what genuinely is the chance of you getting caught like, getting caught doing it but mm. i think the main difference is there's so a lot of the land in in in, in england especially but the uk as a whole tends to be claimed like i said yeah. i'm just talking from my personal like sort of mm. knowledge of it i might be completely wrong um there might be some expert out there but like from from my understanding a lot of the land in in england and the uk is claimed by either mm. farmers or or um organizations that run like the national parks and stuff like that yeah and yep. so therefore there's not a lot of like land left that is just open um mm. because it's such a small little country you know this is yep. not just like completely open land and that's where like a lot of like the the right to roam laws sort of went bye byes is because there's so once the land is obviously claimed then anybody can also make their own rules up for it yeah so and that's you know, the even, difference because even though we have claimed land we can still yeah. camp on it yeah and that's that's sort of an interesting one and that's that thing i'm sure there's plenty of places in the uk that are, that are similar to that but i really like the idea because it, it it defeats the purpose of nature doesn't it to claim it and then not do anything with it Mm. it's it's mm. like what what are you doing if you're saying well this bit of random land is mine yeah but you can't use it you can't enjoy it it's yeah. mine to just do my things with and that's that's really sad I, I like the idea of there being a genuine law out there that says that you can't stop people from just enjoying nature yeah for sure for sure i agree yeah. I agree. I don't use it nearly enough because I don't walk outside. But yeah, I oh, yeah. I agree. It's uh, I think it's uh, it's fair enough that people can't just come into your house. But I, f I feel and <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and obviously you know if you were just to walk into someone's backyard, if you walk through it, probably wouldn't cause that much of a problem like once. But if you like just stood there and watched into their house, that'd probably creep some people out. Um. <laughs> But let's uh, let's round this first uh, edition out with one final question. Mm -hmm. If you could travel back to one vacation spot growing up, be that it doesn't it doesn't have to be uh, you know external to your nation, but a vacation spot, a a different spot than where you grew up, where would that be? Ooh, that's deep. I, I, I have an issue with that in the fact that I would almost travel back to the same spot we went every year. Yeah. And be like, go do something different. Go yeah. and 
actually do something that's more fun because and don't get me wrong you know like when your parents are paying for it you're not putting in any any impetus are you you're like thank you very much for my holiday yeah you know love you very much parents and i will peace out now um and go back to school and be a good boy but it is it's still that it's still that thing of like having grown up now and fitting with with Eric's title of the podcast and all that, having grown up now, <laughs> the the whole idea of traveling and like uh like for me the, the 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 number one rule is like don't just do the same thing. Like sure, I'll go back to like the same area in the UK once a year, but it'll be for like a camping trip that costs yeah. us like sixty quid for a weekend. Like yeah, it yeah. will not be the holiday of the year. I don't understand people that you know a lot of, a lot of um the stereotypes about British people are that we we go to you know the same place in in south in the south of Spain every year, and the worst part is that those stereotypes are absolutely founded most of the time. There are so many British people that just go back to the same same spot in the south of Spain and it it's given us such a bad name as tourists um for just being beard up shitheads but like there's I mean, there's so like many places. Yeah, I mean, they like it there. That's nice, but none of the Spanish people like them, and that's totally <laughs> no. fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's so much, so much out there to explore. So it's, it's, it's almost like I would, I would almost turn that question the other way around and go, I would actually go to the place that I'd always been as a kid, and if I had the option, and you know, if it, if it also came with that golden ticket to give, you know my parents loads of money to then spend on holidays it would also be just go anywhere else but this this is nice this is you know nostalgic and all the rest of it but Mm -hmm. just go and explore places because it's so much fun and there's so much different stuff out there so many different cultures to explore and to to appreciate that going back to the same place is just it's a waste of time almost yeah but that obviously comes with the 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 caveat of you know (coughs) I completely appreciate the fact that, you know, when you're not paying for the holiday, you don't get a say in it. No, I, I agree. And I, I, I agree with the sentiment. I think mm. it's, it's, I think it's prefer, preferential to, to explore stuff more so yeah. than to go to the same spot every time. I, I agree. And that's what we've done, but we still return to different spots pretty much yearly. So we, Pretty yeah, much yeah. almost always went to, like, Mallorca once a year. Almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and the years we didn't do that, we went to Denmark for, like, the water parks and whatnot. Yeah. So so we traded between those two. That would be, like, the, the quote-unquote holiday, which I yeah. have so many fond memories of, meeting new people. Me and you discussed this previously, Jake. Um, yeah, yeah. And that that brilliant part of your childhood where your parents didn't give enough of a toss and they just let you run away and you'll be like, hey, I've met this guy called Sven. Are you right if I go and spend the evening with his parents? And your mum's just like, yeah, go on, yeah, yeah. Do, do what you say. Yeah. <laughs> so Different they're trip. just uh, happy and uh, uh, because uh, then they finally can get some time off. Yeah, absolutely. I have a feeling we will uh, revisit that topic at some point. But <laughs> but but yeah. Uh, that's that's one of the things, but but I do also appreciate the fact that I've I've gotten to see a lot of stuff. So I've seen both mm. of the U.S. coasts. I've seen yeah. lots of European countries: Germany, uh, Poland, the Netherlands, France. You know, I'm I've been lucky in that regard. So I I I definitely share that sentiment of, you know what, if you have the option, going out there and 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 checking new countries is probably preferential compared yeah. to just the same one. But obviously, just getting away from home overall yeah, is probably absolutely. better than not. And that's what I mean. I completely agree with you. And it's just prefacing that with the sort of like not trying to sound ungrateful. Like yeah. I'm very grateful for, you know, just enjoying the holidays that we had as, as, a, as a kid. You know, like I was very happy. But if, I, if, I, if you ask, you know, like what would you rather have done? now with the knowledge i have like you say going back uh, as you as you have that in your head now because as a kid it wasn't my thought as a kid i was very happy doing Mm -hmm. doing what we were doing i was not like oh i really want to go to you know portugal right now (laughs) or i really want to go to krakow Mm -hmm. like it was not my it was not my thought back then but um knowing what i do now it would be 
it'd definitely be a thought. It'd be like, yeah, we should go anywhere but the same place in Wales. That'd be nice. And you need to to wrap this up. Favorite? I'll I'll, I'll let you say inland if that if if you have a particular memory, but just your favorite place to like that was proper vacation. And so we usually went, like you say, to one place as well. We went uh, to the Canary Islands, as all the other Norwegians did. <laughs> Any uh, reason? It's, first of all, it was cheap, it was kid-friendly, and it was always a direct flight. And yeah, it's a, it's a good place to be. There's is that from, Stav- uh, that's from Stavanger, or did you have to go to Oslo? Christian San. Uh, no, you could, yeah, and Stavanger. So, yeah, but, Christian San and Stavanger. Yeah, all those charter companies, uh, which yeah. is now, I just believe, two, I think that's the only one that's left, but this was like right, Star yeah. Tour way back when. Um, yeah, yeah. They did, they did, they did all the large uh, airports. I don't think they did the one in Santa Fiore, but they did the other ones. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Would you actually use the one in Santa Fiore? Because, no. like, in terms of like going Someone to Oslo, does. it's an absolute pain, isn't it? Yeah. But no. If, I... I guess from from your guys' point of view, it's actually possibly better. Yeah. No. Uh, I... So we would rather dre- take either Kristiansand and Stavanger, and yeah. then fly to. Oslo and then from Oslo go <laughs> to where we're going. Yeah, that's hilarious. I uh, I agree with that sentiment. Yeah, uh, either that for, or now we're going to uh, at least when we're going to Egypt. Most of the time we're going from Stavanger to Copenhagen and then from Copenhagen to Egypt yeah. because it's a bigger airport and it has uh, a better flight. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Especially now right. with the kid as well. I guess. Um... Like for you guys going to uh, Gardaman would be like ridiculously long, wouldn't it? Because it's basically going all the way through Oslo and then out the other side. Uh, it's like yep. six and a half, seven hours. Yeah, that's rough. That's that's like choosing to fly out of Edinburgh for me. Yeah, you know, be yeah. an absolutely ridiculous idea. Mm. But yeah, so usually we're going we're going to Grand, uh, to the Canary Islands, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, I did as a kid. I really enjoyed it. Um, but my best, like, holiday memory was celebrating Christmas at a cabin my dad had through work. Uh, we did that for, like, five years in a row or something like that. I really miss that place. We, we always had a bunch of friends coming up as well during the Christmas and stuff like that. So, uh, I would do that again, even though I do agree with you guys as well as going to different places. <laughs> I'm very lucky that I still get to go to a lot of different places within the circumstances that I have with my wife and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we can go a lot of places and we we always do go a lot of places. We travel at least two, three times a year to see either a new place or a different place in the same areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I would go back to like the memories as a kid for sure. Going to the cabin, winter time, a bunch of snow, uh, going to the swimming pools area and everything like that. Yeah, for sure. I would go back there in a heartbeat. Sounds nice. It does sound mm. nice. And on that note, I think we're going to round off this first edition. It, it was fun. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoy these conversations. I, I, Same. I think. The, the tricky part is going to be the topics. Um, well, it's not a tricky part, but eventually it might be a tricky part. But if there are someone still listening to this rant half, like 90 minutes down the road, uh, if you do have topics, we, we welcome them. Um, ah, suggestions. Always welcome. Yes. Um, and Just don't uh, get me started on the Queen. <laughs> I I I I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll 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 give you some insight on that after uh, we've uh, wrapped this one up. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, heck, let's do the regular YouTube one. If you did like it, do like and uh, comment if you do have a topic. And that is about it. Yep. I uh, comment the name of your nan's cat. Yeah, that'll help. That'll, help, that'll, that'll help too. Yeah. And hey, in seven days back, let's go for it. Yeah, why not? Mm. Why not? And I do think uh, we talked about this, so spoiler. Um, we might uh, also bring some form of a series of just us playing random games 
and yeah. mostly Rocket League. And just that's a different series altogether. But we'll we'll talk about that later down the line. I I definitely want to play more with you guys because we're gonna do oh, another armor sure. let's play, aren't we? Oh yeah. <sighs> Let's go for it. Yeah, well, now it, now it's out on YouTube. You got to do it. This is blackmail. <laughs> this video to five likes, and, we, and Eric will have to. No, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thank you to if you we two get as well. One it's... comment, I will sell my left kidney. Uh, no, yeah. uh, I I really appreciate these talks, and uh, thank you too. I know we're all busy. It is what it is. We we try to make it happen, and and as we've discussed, sometimes it might just be two of us. Um, yeah. depending on circumstances um i think an hour 30 minutes is like a good runtime for a podcast i think uh at that point we're mentally drained and uh if there's anyone still listening they're probably yeah, mentally, drained mentally drained as well drained. yeah <laughs> so. oh, they're way down yeah, yeah. so yeah no they've but, fallen uh, asleep to our dulcet tones yeah <laughs> oh fall asleep to our dulcet tones that's a podcast name right <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, for listening. Do take care and uh we will talk to you soon enough.